Hey everybody, we just got done with a Facebook Live. This Facebook Live. Talking about doing the raffle. No, time out. Quality at bats. Quality at bats. Raffle, quality at bats, answer some awesome questions. Enjoy. Spiker Helms. This is Ryan Miller. We are national oh, directors yes. for the Rawlings Tigers. Where we got our chops were from The View. Speaking of The View, one of the leaders in home runs um, in 2010. And speaking of home runs, the Yankees are absolutely destroying the baseball, leading the league in home runs. And it got us thinking, we need to talk about quality at bats. We need to talk about what's going on um, with your approach and how you should approach um, each game and each at bat. Now, in this live session, we're gonna talk about the raffle. That's gonna be, we're gonna give more information on that. And then um, we're gonna get into the actual form, this chart that will help you. Um, also shout out to our Kansas City Tigers. We are making a trip to you guys um, starting tomorrow. We're going to make our way towards Kansas City. Bright and early. Bright and early, 7 a.m. Real early. <laughs> we'll be there, crack so, of dawn. Yeah, so we cannot wait um, to see you guys. And, yeah, the first thing that I want to get into, before we get into the quality at best chart, we got to talk about – got to do the pre-context to it, which is the learning curve, the, the gap towards each level when you talk about – um, your approach towards the game. Youth is different, high school, college, professional. Um, if, you look at the, if you look at the Yankees compared to a college baseball team, completely different. They have data, they have video, they have, they have so much information. Um, they can go into an at-bat with um, the best of the best. And when you're talking about college, you're dealing with limited information. And then when you go to high school, more limited information. Literally goes down to, I'm just going to see fastball and react curve. And then youth baseball, it's just, I hope he throws it right down the middle. So we're going to dig deep into this. And um, with that said, let's have Ryan jump in as he is ready to go. Yes. So playing off what Spiker just said, segueing off of that, uh, this past weekend was my second weekend of fall. Uh, with my team that's straight out of, you know, again, they're fresh out of youth baseball. This is their first year of high school ball. And, and that learning gap is, is absolutely huge. It's, 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 it's a mental gap that needs to be it's, – it's a huge hurdle that needs to be jumped, and it's a mental gap, and there's a whole lot of, of things that need to be filled in. And we're going to be dealing on those topics for, uh, from here on out. Um, one, big, one, one thing I really harped on my guys this weekend were their approaches at the plate, being more aggressive. And I sent them a message on Saturday night, and that message was, you know, the, the difference between how a, a, a high school and college hitter thinks versus how a, a youth hitter thinks. When you got a run around second base, less than two outs, you know, you're down by one, Are you gonna? and you have a pitcher, you're facing a pitcher that's commanding the zone with a fastball and proving that he can put it right there first pitch. Are, you, are we going to sit there and be aggressive, or are we going to watch that pitch go by? And the first weekend we were watching that pitch go by. And we're losing a lot of missed opportunities. And what happens is, is when you miss those opportunities, you, your odds of success start to decrease. And, and, and each, uh, each opportunity missed, so when you miss that 0-1 fastball, you miss that 0-2 fastball, your, your, your odds of getting on base will decrease. So um, the one thing I talked about then was being more aggressive, you know, getting ready to pull the trigger. Pay attention before you're at bat. Know what's going on. When you're in the dugout, try to pick the pitcher's tendencies. Try to get a plan in place. Because if you wait till you get up there, it's too late. So the biggest thing, the biggest mental hurdle to 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 jump is just the the other side of the game that that's not really taught at the youth level. Um, and I wrote a blog on that on the side too, and I'm sure uh, I'll be sending that out at some point. But um, that you got to be able, you know, it's 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 competing at a higher level mentally and physically. Um, they want to compete fit just physically at the, the youth level, and then they're, they're forgetting the mental side. It's um, it's almost like you're playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. Yeah, I was and just thinking about when, that, too. When you're a pitcher, you have, you have the authority. You're the one that's in control of what's going on. Um, and that's why baseball is a beautiful sport, because you're dealing with um, the defense that holds the ball. The majority of sports, 
they don't hold the ball. The defense doesn't hold the ball. So they have all the firepower. When um, talking to hitters, they feel at times that they're not in control of their situation. They don't have the controllable. So how do you how do you get someone that has all the control, has the ball in hand, and is ready to to fire away? How do you take that and change it into your um, your benefit? And it's all dealing with the mental side. Um, and you'll you'll hear hitters, high level hitters, talk about the mental side more than mechanics. They'll, they'll mention every once in a while, hey, I'm working through my hands. I'm trying to get my hands inside the baseball. I'm working on my front arm. I'm working on my back arm. Um, I'm working working on my back leg drive. You'll hear that, but right after that you hear the mental side. I'm trying to get my approach. I'm trying to hunt the fastball. I'm trying to I'm trying to search for that outside pitch. And so what we have here is we have a chart and sometimes we kind of forget because there's a lot of things that are going through our head. It could be fear. It could be confidence. It could be um, what, what we're going to eat after the game. It could be a majority of things. It could be talking about Fortnite. But, and we kind of lose track. We have an idea but then we lose track. So one thing that we can do for the coach, because they're not the ones with the bat, we can give them the tool as well, which is this quality at bats chart. This is something that Ryan came up with and he puts it in his dugout every single time. Every single time. And you, you know, I actually had, I have coaches that reach out to me on Twitter, um, you know, throughout the season. And cause we, we we're sharing this. We're, it's absolutely free. We're sharing it. We're giving it to you. Mm -hmm. Um, and coaches across the country have picked it up and they put it in their dugout. And we have all our own coaches within our own club. And what they do with the chart uh, is kind of different from what I do. What I do, since I'm at the high school level, I just kind of – I put it right at the end of the dugout before they walk on deck, right at eye level. So I'm subconsciously trying to build that in the back of their head. I'm not trying to harp on it. I talk about them, but I subconsciously am trying to put it in the back of their head right before they step in the box. At the youth level – you're going to get this chart, too, to help chart your quality of bats. But at the youth level, I feel like I'm on QVC right now. I swear. <laughs> at the youth level, a lot 9 99 <laughs> 9 no, It's free. It's free. It's, free. Um, it's at free. The, at the youth level, a lot of coaches are having their own players chart their quality of bats of their own and the other team. That way it keeps them in tune and engaged. But let's get into the nine. There's nine types of quality of bats. Let's get into them. We well, got first off, before before we get into that, um, understand if you if you guys want to ask questions, go ahead and ask questions. Type them in the comments. Also, if you do want this chart, there is a link in the actual post itself. So I'm actually looking at it right now. You can click at it. it. Says check it, and there's the link. So that's how you get this thing. Um, but first off, with the quality of bats, you're you're not going to see home run. You're not going to see triple. You're not going to see double. You're you're going to see things that you're probably thinking, why what uh, what. Uh, we want to we want to get doubles. We want to get triples. It's all about the dingers, right? Um, oh, it, dingers. Yeah, it's all about big Al. But when we're talking when we're talking about He's the quality of bats, there's ac there's actually one one thing on here that actually qualifies an actual hit. That, that's it, and it says hit. That's that, that's one of the, that's the top thing. Get a hit, and then the other ones have nothing to do with getting a hit. Go ahead. So, go, so, go so, the, so, what's, so what's so what's the purpose behind the nine types of quality of bats? So we got a hit, a walk. I'm reading this backwards, by the way. Hit by pitch, sacrifice fly, hard hit ball, sacrifice bunt, six plus pitch at bat, advance the lead runner, and four pitches after two strikes. The problem is, is that we have too many hitters who live and die on this first one, whether they get hit or not. That's it. They don't understand. There's eight more types of quality at bats. Just because you didn't get on base doesn't mean you didn't do something productive for yourself and for the team. It doesn't mean you didn't see six-plus pitches. Imagine this. Every pit, every hitter, the first time through the lineup, sees six-plus pitches. That pitcher, that starting pitcher on the opposing team is going to be out real quick unless he turns something around. And, you know, it's, the goal is always to get to the bullpen. Um, sacrifice fly, get the runner over, getting them in, hard hit ball. You hit a ball hard, it wasn't a hit. You know, it's it's the main purpose of this is to help youth hitters and high school and hitters who are lost. I keep moving around. Yes. Hold that for me. The main purpose of this is to help hitters understand, you know, the, the bigger picture of the game. The, the the it's it's more than just a hit and, and getting on base. It's it's being able to sacrifice yourself. It's being able to get the next guy up behind you. It's being able to really get deep into counts. 
because at the same time, you know, it's four pitches after two strikes. So we're sitting here 0-2. Are you able to see four pitches after two strikes? That tells me, A, you either walked or you struck out. That's a heck of a now bad after starting 0-2. Uh, you know, it's hit by pitch. That sucks, but it's going to hurt. And that's one thing. That's well, And the, the hit on that is like <laughs> – Pun not intended. Um, to hit on that yeah. is um, when talking to players, they think that, oh, I have to get a hit. And I tell them the value that you bring to a team is, one, you have to be able to catch and you have to be able to throw. Um, you have to be able to do that. If you don't, you you only have one position. And I would rather have nine positions available to be, be in the starting lineup. So first off, you got to catch and you got to throw. The third thing is you have to find a way to be productive. That's either getting a walk, getting hit by pitch, or, um, or, or just getting on base in general. So when you get on base, you are very, very valuable. Um, that's why they, they value on base percentage. On base percentage is super, super important. Um, when, when, when I coach, I, I put my on base percentage up at the top of the list. That is one that that is one category that I'm absolutely um, involved with is that that player has to have good on base percentage because if I can get people on base, then we can start figuring out how to score them. It starts with getting guys on base and then scoring them. So if you're a one or two hole hitter, your job is to get on base. Yeah. Your job is not to hit a home run over the fence. Your job is to get on base. Yeah. And Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I absolutely love it. And MLB tonight. But the narrative that they push is you have to hit dingers because sugar sells, vegetables don't. It's it's that simple. So what what does everyone like to see? That was really good. Thank you. They, they, that was really do good. you know what they like to see? They like to see home runs. So when you talk about that, talk about the vegetables. No one wants to talk about that. Eat your broccoli. Eat 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 all the vegetables. That's that's it's that simple. It, and. You know, there's one thing coaches got to do. You got to be straightforward, honest with your players. I mean, it's it's a hard thing to do, especially when you got players that are dreaming big and you want them to dream big. And but you got to help them understand, like you can have those aspirations, but a you got to be willing to work for it, mm -hmm. and b you have to understand what your current situation is. So if you're a five two, you know, five two hundred and fifty pound player, you might have the mentality that you want to hit dingers, want to hit home runs. But it's just not going to happen at a 14, 15 year level. You have to understand your current situation. Work for the bigger situation. Who's to say you're not going to be a six foot three left fielder, 225 pound player who's going to hit 25 a season in college? Who knows? We have to work towards that. We can't. We have to understand the moment we're in, but also understand the bigger picture as a player. And that is why we put so much emphasis on the quality at bats because the goals. The goal is to get 15 a game. If you're getting 15 of these a game, you're really kicking the dirt into some other team. If you're getting about seven to eight, it's a 2-1 ball game, depending on how the other team does. If you get five or less, you're losing. You're losing, and if you get zero, then that's a rough game. So 15 is the goal. Start at 12. Quality of bets. It's the difference between wins and losses. Just, and just a reminder, um, if you would like to ask a question, please put it in the comments. If you want this chart, um, just click the link that's in there. It says check it, and then there's the link. Click that. You'll be able to get that chart. Um, the first question that we have, count is 3-0. When should you swing away or look for four, or ball four? Does the situation matter? I have an awesome story for you. So I was a player that um, was super aggressive. I was very, very aggressive, and I hated walking. I absolutely hated it. And we're in an inner squad, and w this is where when me and Ryan were at, in college together. It was at junior college, and there was a 3-0 count freshman, freshman year, and I swing 3-0. My coach went absolutely livid, went really, really livid. It was awesome. You should have been there. Re went really, really livid, and – he literally said this, there is not a single person on this team that is going to swing 3-0 and looked at everybody and then looked right at me. And he said, you, you are some cocky and then use some superlatives and you need to understand that this is a team sport. Stop being selfish. 3-0 you're taking. If you hit three home runs in a game, guess what? and you're on that fourth at bat, you're swinging away 3-0. But until that point, you are not swinging 3-0. So at, for any player or any coach or any parent, 
um, when they watch baseball, 3-0 count, unless you are straight up on fire and you're batting 600, 700, you're, you're one pitch away from getting on base. Again, on base percentage is way more important than hits. If you're able to get on base, you are very, very productive for that team. So 3-0, it's an absolute take because guess what? You're going to get 3-1. Tom out. You're going to get that fastball. I love that perspective, but you got to understand there's also multiple perspectives in this game. I love that, the 3-0. I have a different perspective as a coach. If the situation is 100% right, if the situation calls for it, take it. Just like Spiker said, 100%. 100%. You know, your goal is to get on base. But for some reason, it, me as a coach, I like to hit. You know, if, if, if the situation calls for it. So let's say base is loaded, 3-0 count, two strikes, or I'm sorry, two outs. You know it's going to be a fastball. You know it's, it, the, the other team's up by three. You know it's going to be a fastball. And that same – actually, it's funny. Two summers ago, the same situation happened. I had a player come up, base is loaded two outs, and we were down by three, and he comes up and he goes, he calls time, he comes down to me in the third base coaching box, he goes, hey coach, do you want me to take the 3-0? And I said, dude, we're down by three, you know he's throwing a fastball, sit dead red. If he throws nothing but that fastball and it's there, turn on it. If it's there, go with it, turn on it. All right, if it's off speed, let it go. Change the not going to be off speed. Okay? But look to hit, look to hit. Don't look to walk mentally, look to hit the ball, all right, finger always on the trigger, okay, react, recognize, then make that adjustment. And what ended up happening was he ended up hitting that 3 0 pitch off the left field wall, scoring, hitting a triple, um, scoring those three runs to tie the game. Then he went on to score the, the walk off run, which was pretty cool. Um, it just all depends on the situation for me as a coach. I guess it goes down to feel, if it's feel, but I play percentages. I'm a data guy, I go by percentages, and I'm very, very um, adamant about taking that unless it's unless it's an absolute feel now ryan is all about under he he knows he knows the game really well and he's he's he feels out the situations really well me personally i'm i'm more conservative when it comes to that so i i don't like to roll the dice for that because i know that the data speaks that more than likely he's going to get that 3-1 fastball again or he's going to get that walk and we're we're we chip away and we we end up playing we end up playing another another inning that's that's how I view it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. For me, it's a sixth sense. So it's just, but it all it all it all centers back on paying attention from the first pitch, and because that first pitch all the way to the last pitch dictate the situation, and that's where I kind of get the feeling for what feels right for 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 the situation. And you know, it's it, as a coach, you gotta be willing to take risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, go for the win. Was it go for the win at home? Go for the tie away or something like that. It just depends on the coach. It depends on, but again, the players have to trust the coach, and the and the players have to be all in on the coach. Um, and I think that's what the moral of the story was with my with our junior college coach is that he was telling us that hey, I'm the general, you're not. You need to understand that you have to under you have to go what the general says. If you don't, then the team then the team is undermined and you are off on a, on your own and you're on an island. Which he was totally right because um, in 2010 we ended up leading the nation in home runs. So he he did have um, a, um, some very good advice. I had one of those, just one. <laughs> Again, um, if you guys want to make a, if you guys want to ask question please put in the comments um if you um want to uh, we're going to be doing the raffle here shortly we're going to talk about the raffle if you would like to comment and get some um entries in you can do that too but anyways uh jared silva a lot of coaches ask their players to take the first pitch at younger ages what are your thoughts on this um do you want to take a stab at this or do you want me to take a stab at this first i'll take a stab at it okay you read that one i just take a second yep i already i already saw it um, I didn't. I, I didn't even. I wasn't paying attention. I'll do it. I wasn't okay. paying attention. I'll do this it. was like class all over again. I'll do it. Um, so, first off, it depends on the age group. No, don't that, take the first pitch. Okay, that's his. That's his point. But Be aggressive. It's. It, it depends on the age group because again, you're dealing with different pitchers at um, at six U or eight U, nine U, than twelve U, fourteen U high school. I absolutely disagree with the seventh inning. We're down by three, and we're taking the first pitch. I absolutely hate that. I think it is the worst philosophy in the entire universe, and here's why. Because 
when you when you talk about hitting to your to your players, we talk about being aggressive. And mostly every coach does that. You gotta be aggressive, you gotta attack the fastball, you gotta do this. And then all of a sudden you switch everything. You switch the whole plan and you say, hey, you have to take the first pitch. What is that gonna send a message to your teammates or to your players? It's hey, we're gonna play conservative because we're playing in fear rather than let's stick to our game plan. If we end up losing, we end up losing. So um, what I tell my guys is that you have to be selective, but you're still attacking your pitch. If you get that pitch, you're attacking because that's how we that's how we've been doing it all season long. Now the younger age groups, if we're talking about nine u ten u, you're you're there's there's a there's a lot of variables there because um, pitchers are not as great. They're not they're, they they struggle with location. So it's kind of a read play for the coaches. You have to read the pitcher, make sure you're paying attention to the pitcher rather than than talking to the players. You you pay attention to what's going out in, in your surroundings, and then you make an executive decision and say, "All right, we're sticking to our plan. We're gonna hit." Or if the guy's throwing all over the place, you tell your hitters, "Guys, we're, we're look at the pitcher. He's he's throwing all over the place. We're it, you need to take the first pitch." It's Jared, I don't know if you're you're you're, meant, you're you're talking in regards to the beginning or the end of the game. I'm just going to go ahead and, and reference the end of the game. I have two different approaches here. You know, it's and very rarely will I use the 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 go to approach of take a pitch um, to get on. You know, to to work the count. It just depends. Very rarely will I go there um, because if you think about it, if you're taking that first pitch, you're probably losing, and there's only one way to get back in the game. You know, if, if, if it's a close game down by one, I mean, I'm going to hit. Because if he's going to throw a fastball, if he is a leadoff guy, it's a double. You got runner in scoring position, no outs. But, I mean, it just – it all depends on the situation, which is where I, why I rarely go there. But, I mean, if you're down by a lot and the opposing pitcher is doing what he's supposed to be doing, he's just going to be pumping fastballs. You can't miss that one pitch because, I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect pitch. All right, but, there, but there's missed opportunities, and when you miss that only fastball, you're going to get that entire at bat, that first pitch. You're kind of setting yourself up to dig out of a hole, and that's option one, which I very rarely go to. Option two is what I go to a lot, and that is hitter, the first hitter, to, you know, in the, one of the last two innings, the first hitter, whoever gets up to bat, you know, starting with the first hitter, you are taking the first pitch, and then until we get somebody on. So if the first hitter, he'll take the first pitch. If he gets on base – that second hitter doesn't have to take. He has the opportunity to drive him in because obviously there's no outs runner on first. Now, if that first hitter does not get on base, he gets out, so we're sitting with one out, nobody on, that's when that second hitter, since there's nobody on, will have to take the first pitch. So basically, we're only taking that first pitch until we get somebody on base, and then it's it's then I swing away. Swing away. Because if you get that fastball, put it in the gap, which we're going to score a run. So. And um, in pro ball, there's, there's a rule. And, and the rule was that – if you have a long inning on defense, the first batter that's up takes the pitch. That was the only time that we really had that plan of you're going to take the first pitch. Um, and the reason was was that the data showed that the splits are really poor when you start getting strikes on you. So if you're 0 one your batting average decreases significantly. If you're 0 you're sit you're sitting at a pretty good standpoint. If you're 1-0, you're, you're, you're batting really, really well. So – the splits were very, very important to us, and we and we didn't take it off MLB. We would actually take the the splits off of our own team. So, um, who, what, what was our tendencies as an offense? So, um, that's another thing like to think about. I don't know if it really plays well in youth baseball, but understand that as you get deeper into counts, you are more likely to get out rather than a hit. There's one more scenario where you're going to want to take pitches. Um, First batter gets up, swings at the first pitch. Okay. The second batter that comes up to the plate. So if we're one pitch, one out, that mm -hmm. second batter's got to take a pitch. He, we cannot he, we cannot get in a two out, two pitch, two out situation. And then definitely if that first if that second batter swings at that first pitch and gets two two outs, two pitches, two outs, that third batter better be working it either hitting something to the gap or working it to a full count or something. He better be seeing four, five, six pitches at a bat. There's Three pitches, three outs is, is – there's no excuse for it. That's, that's a quick inning, and you just gave that, that – the opposing pitcher a free inning. I think it comes down to, as a coach it's, uh, and, and players, is that – and let's go for parents too, if you, if you really want to get involved with the game, is understanding the ebbs and flows of the games. There's no cookie-cutter approach. There, you have a plan, 
But then once you get punched, just like Mike Tyson said, I have a plan going in there. But once I get punched, I end up changing that plan and I end up going with how the fight is going. So it's the same thing with baseball. Once I'm in battle, I have a plan going in, which is this. I have a plan going in. But once I get punched, then I have a different, I, I have a different plan because I'm reading what's happening in front of me. That's how great players are great players. That when, when you are at the basic level and you haven't experienced a lot of baseball, so it's, it's hard for you to read plays. But once you play a lot, then you start understanding, oh, I've seen this before. Oh, this is what happened. I'll do this instead. So it's just ebbs and flows of the game. I actually, speaking about that, I actually sent a met group message to my team on Saturday night about how the plan changes. Um, this is baseball. There's no such thing as a perfect plan. And there's an image here, and I will post it here at the end of this. I'll put it at the top of the comments, but it shows what the game plan is, and it shows a lot of chicken scratch all over, moving guys around. And then uh, I wrote a piece on it as well, so I'll share that with you. I'm going to um, post it up on our Medium account medium.com account where we put all of our blogs and then i'll share that with you guys as well mike side jr says what about take until the pitcher throws a strike it's the same conversation um it just depends on what your philosophy is as a coach me personally um i hate saying that i absolutely hate it because i've taught my players to to be aggressive i and as a coach it's kind of like how i played I was very aggressive early in the counts because I knew the percentages, I knew the data. I wanted to get I, I get ahead of him. If he the what the pitcher's trying to do is he's trying to get a strike first pitch. So what is he going to do? He's going to throw a fastball. He's going to throw his, he's going to throw his best pitch at you and it's going to be in the zone. He's not trying to throw it out of the zone. He's not trying to be perfect. He's not trying to place it on that corner. He's actually just trying to get ahead of you. So as a pitcher or as a hitter, I want to be in control. I know what he's going to throw. He's going to be throwing right right at me, so I'm going to go right back at him. Best way to think about it, um, be aggressive, but be able to pull back the reins a little bit if you need to. Aggressive patience. Depending we, – we keep saying this, so it must be important. Depending on the situation, mm -hmm. and that is the most important thing. It's not the same throughout. It's the situation, and you don't – you have the situation is not black or white. It's mm -hmm. a feeling. It's a sense, and, and that it's goes something back, you and that, pick up. and that goes back to experience. That's why it's so valuable to have experienced coaches and have um, experienced staff around you because you they've seen so much of the game. They've seen so much that's happened in front of them that if you're able to have that special person that's coaching you, oh man, the the, the doors just open up. Like our alum, I had an alumni um, text me yesterday asking me about swings, and I said um, you. You need, to, you need to consult with your coaches because right now you have the best coaches in the NCAA. You need, to, uh, you need to ask them those questions. I'm very honored. I'm very grateful that you want my, my thoughts, but trust your coaching staff. So when you find that coach, go all in on him and trust on his experience. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, Mike – just tell Brennan to be aggressive, hit doubles, <laughs> and, and I think we'll be fine. Um, you want to you wanna yeah. talk about this raffle? I got the towel. Yeah, absolutely. I got the towel. We got a towel here. We got – so last week – so we're doing a raffle every month. We'll get this one going here. Um, we started last week. We're going to be raffling this one off uh, here at the beginning of – Homer. October. That's Homer. It's a beach towel. Uh, for all of our Rawlings Tigers out there, we have a slew of stuff um, for family and friends and, and the Tiger community. Um, I mean, the apparel line is phenomenal. The mm – -hmm. There's so many things out there, but um, um, for this raffle item, you know, if, if, if you want to be entered into the raffle, what is it? What did we say? It was, if you got to leave a comment, leave a comment, your name gets one entry, ask a question, it's two entries. Mm -hmm. And then if you share this video, it's three entries. So if you're, if you'd like to have your name entered in for the raffle, um, please leave a comment, question, or share the video. And we will be drawing that. I think the first somewhere around the first Friday, first Saturday, Sunday, that first weekend of October, and then we will be releasing the next cool item, which I don't know yet. Yeah, I have we to, will decide that. I have soon. to go dig around and see. Uh, uh, big shout out to Rawlings. Obviously, we are the Rawlings Tigers, but big shout out to Rawlings. Um, they give all our players um, phenomenal discounts on gloves and bats. If you are a Rawlings Tigers 
player, parent, or coach, um, and you want to shop for Rawlings gear, go to the VIP site, and um, it'll be under Rawlings, literally the tab, Rawlings gear. Um, everything is below MSRP. So um, please go there, take a look at it, um, and it yeah. could possibly get a Christmas gift. We have so actually, corner. We had a meeting this morning about the VIP. We actually, uh, the beautiful thing about being part of the Rawlings Tigers is um, our entire community, family, friends, players, well, family, Whatever. What I if do. you're in the club. <laughs> Finish my sentence, damn it. Finish it. If you're part of the club, you get discounts galore yeah. to the products and apparel. Um, but you gotta you gotta be part of the club and uh it's in our VIP section. And if you're not sure where the VIP section is, below Spiker's email box up. Spiker <laughs> at rollingstigers.com just twenty four seven. Um to answer a previous question, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Arturo Arturo. Alberto, if I did not pronounce that right, thumbs up please, or thumbs down. Yeah, set, please send me a message and, and correct me because um, I hate I hate pronouncing. You can't uh, send name. a thumbs down on Facebook. Yeah, I, I hate pronouncing names wrong. <laughs> Guaranteed but, thumbs um, up. He asked if we want to join the organization as a coach, what can we do? Go to RawlingsTigers.com. There's an application tab for coaches. Um, it says join the Tigers. Click on that tab. It'll just follow the prompts, and then we'll send you more information on what it means to be a Rawlings Tigers team and how you can apply. So um, with that said, we, ha we head out to Kansas City tomorrow. We cannot wait for our KC Tigers. We get to see them. Um, and I like the enthusiasm. I know. I'm, I'm absolutely pumped. That was a level 9. I'm looking for a level 10. Yeah, last, time I, last time I was in KC um, was uh, for college, so I, I cannot wait to get back. Oh, uh, Mike and I were there a couple weeks ago. Congratulations. All right. Um, oh, I got to finish out. Here. Finish out. I'm going to leave with a little piece of uh, some food for thought. And okay. – uh, Tell you guys when this is where this right. is going to be. Then we'll finally Twitter. Um, if you do not know Twitter or you're confused by Twitter, come on Twitter with us. We're trying to figure it out as well. Um, at Spiker Helms and then at Ryan Rowe Miller. Yes, we are very creative with our Twitter handles. It is awesome. But um, we are talking about baseball, talking about coaching, talking about life. I treat it like a li uh, Twitter as a lifestyle. I just want to talk about um, just talk about topics that are um, in my head. And join the conversation. I've been talking to a couple of the alumni and uh, parents and also people outside the organization. So um, there's that. And then also we're on Facebook Live. As you can tell, we are going to upgrade this Facebook Live as we continue. We are looking into more resources on trying to make this picture a little bit clear, audio a little bit better, um, and even the in our studio 1523. I think we're going to hire staff too. We could possibly. Um, last last thing, Instagram, um, yeah. Rawlings Tigers at Rawlings Tigers. Um, there's a lot of cool motivational pictures on there. We also send out um, different things that we see um, that we find interesting in the baseball community. So go on at Rawlings Tigers, and then also our parent company um, at Rawlings. Um, please follow them as well. So biggest one, if you want to uh, Twitter it. You gotta follow us on Twitter. That's where you're gonna see the most of our blogs, um, our videos, our content. We keep that thing going. So make sure you go do that. Last thing I'm gonna leave you with um, again, quality at bats. Click the link up top. We will send you this. If you have trouble, I cannot figure this out. You'll, you'll get better at it. If you have trouble receiving this in your inbox, just shoot us a message on our Facebook page and you get that. And then we'll, the chart will come with it too. So your players, players and or coach can start tracking those. Remember, the goal is 15 a game at the youth level, 10 to 12. And I'll leave you with on leave you with on this yeah. thought. I feel like I said that wrong. Leave you with on this thought. I was gonna say no, but go ahead. I said this a lot during the summer to my 16U team, and I'm saying it a lot this past two weekends to my 15U team. If you're a hitter and you're in the box, you cannot wait until the pitch is on its way to make that decision. Think like a boxer. When a boxer steps in the ring, he doesn't wait for a punch to be thrown to react. You have to be willing and able to react right away. And so if you don't know, if you are don't know, if you do not, I'm struggling now, if you do not know the pitch is going to be a ball or strike, it's a 50-50 chance, okay? Sit, strike 100% of the time, be able to recognize, react, and hold if you need to. Assume swinging at every single pitch. That'll teach you aggressiveness. That'll teach your players aggressiveness, aggressiveness, and it'll also force them to have to recognize and react. So 
you don't know it's going to be a 50 50 chance sit fastball or i'm sorry sit strike 100 percent of the time trust yourself recognize react hold if, you, if it's a ball so that's something that'll help you out with your aggressiveness and help you out um start working your way towards quality at bats so awesome uh, click the link if you want the form, and then um, also, um, I'm trying to think what else I need to say before I let you go. Um, I think that's it. All right. Oh, oh. My these, these Facebook Lives we're putting on our YouTube channel as well. So if you want to go back and see what we talked about, um, please do so. Go to the YouTube channel, and then also we're sending them out through email. So if you want to join the email, um, just click that link too. All right. See ya.